Yo, what's up guys, Sam here, and today we're checking out hidden features in iOS 16. Yeah, it might look the same on the home screen as it has for a while, but look a little bit deeper, and guys, there are features here that I legitimately thought we would never see. So if you're excited, drop a like, hit subscribe for more tips and tricks, and let's jump in. All right guys, so first up in the Messages app, you can now edit and unsend messages. If you tap and hold on stuff like that, you now get this new menu that has undo, send, and edit. So you can see I meant to say this is a test message for a video, so now I can tap on edit, go ahead and change the wording around, and just like that, it will reflect on the other person's end what you actually meant to say. But let's say you've done the unthinkable, you didn't mean to send this, you know, it's a late night, you know what I'm saying, you're like, ah, I shouldn't have sent that, go ahead and just tap on undo send, and poof, it's gone, and hopefully your relationship with whoever will be saved. Also in messages, you can finally mark things as unread. So if you realize like, oh shoot, I actually didn't want to read that right now, just like an email, you can finally swipe over here, tap this, and now the blue dot will be back, and it'll show you that you have a notification, which is just so handy, thank you Apple. Also, if you delete chats in iOS 16 like this, you can actually recover them now. Just tap on edit and go to show recently deleted, and all of this, including all of those messages, will be saved, which is great. You can recover them and not lose all that stuff if you didn't mean to delete it. Next up, have you ever joined a network and then forgotten the Wi-Fi password? Well, iOS 16 allows you to actually view that for the first time. You just head over to settings and Wi-Fi and then tap on the eye icon next to a record that you've already joined. And once you're there, you can go ahead and reveal the Wi-Fi password, which is so nice. Like genuinely, iOS 16 is worth it for that upgrade alone. I can't tell you how many times I forgot my password and now you can you can actually view it on device which is incredible next up iOS 16 also enables haptic keyboard feedback so every time you press a letter there's a slight vibration that feels so incredible you can enable it by heading over to settings going down to sound and haptics and then for keyboard feedback you've got this new option right here for sound and haptics and when you turn it on any keyboard on your phone will now feel so much better you can feel every time that you've touched a letter and obviously I can't like really demonstrate that that over video, but I'm telling you guys, enable this, try it out. It is, I, I don't know, man, it's sick. One of the most technically impressive features in iOS 16 though is this, where you can tap and hold on a photo and then drag this into a message and share basically anything as a sticker PNG. Like this is straight up happening native on the iPhone. Any of these photos, for example, like uh, like this one right here, you know, maybe you're trying to get that PNG of a little thirst trap. You just take this, drag it into messages, and it becomes a sticker just like that. I mean, I don't know how Apple's done it. It works so well in sending this stuff. You know, may, may, maybe we'll delete that one. But that's just the start of new features in Photos. There's also a new duplicate section, which will show you on your iPhone all of the photos that are just taking up empty space for no reason. You can select these, select all, and get rid of them at once. But maybe most exciting is that the hidden album can now be locked with Face ID. So if you don't want people to see your photos, there's no way they can get into them unless your phone recognizes your face specifically. Of course, if you go ahead and tap on that and then I actually scan my face, yeah, you guys can see all these, all these wild photos. Wow, look at this. I know, I, I, this is just exclusive for YouTube. But yeah, obviously if there's you know some things you wanna hide, they're now safer than ever, obviously locked behind your lock screen now, in addition to a second layer of hidden in photos. So like, you gotta go through some layers to view these in iOS 16. Dictation in iOS 16 got a huge upgrade already. Not only can it do punctuation or even put question marks in here, which is super cool. Um, it can also input emoji, which is the feature I wanna show you. So you can say smiley face emoji or crying emoji, or poop emoji, and uh, it just puts it in there just like that. It's actually a huge step forward as well, because you can also type. It's not locked before where you would have to disable it and then re-enable it. As soon as you stop typing, you can just go right back to dictating. Next up, by now you guys have already heard about the all new lock screen in iOS 16, and I've got a whole separate video on this showing you how to use it. So if you wanna check it out, tap up here in the top right hand corner of the screen. But something I haven't seen people talk about as much is new updates to the home screen. Specifically, there are new buttons down here for the original or gradient, color, or even add additional photos. But on the original, there's a cool option called blur, where you can add a really nice effect to your home screen like that. And this works for any wallpaper. Now, when you go back to your home screen, screen, it's much easier to see your icons and it also looks so nice. Like just the transition from the lock screen 
into the home screen. I mean, obviously Apple nailed it. I'm just saying that the new blur effect is even a cherry on top of what we got on the lock screen. And while we're talking about the lock screen, if you have an iPhone 13 or newer, Face ID now works in landscape. So as you guys can see, my phone was completely sideways and it worked, which is gonna be great. If you often use your phone at weird angles, Face ID used to only work like this which was a weird restriction, but now it finally works in landscape and it's actually super nice and it works amazing. Next up in maps, you can finally add multiple stops to a route. So as you guys can see, I've got this fly out of LAX in just a couple of hours, but now I can add stops. Let's say I wanna to go to Bubblegum Shrimp Co. And then I wanna add a stop, let's say at this AC Hotel Los Angeles. I think you can add up to five or six different stops like this Best Buy. When you go ahead and load up here and hit go, it'll tell you the time and also show you exactly the route to get there and also other routes. I've tried it out and it actually works really well. So thank you, Apple. Now we can go to multiple places without having to restart navigation every single time. While the weather app in iOS 16 broadly looks the same as it has before, albeit with a couple of tweaks, you can now tap on things for more information. A UV index right here, but also pretty much anything else like temperature or the precipitation index or what it feels like. And it'll give you a perfect graph of everything throughout the day. You can even view details about this for like a week in advance of what it's going to feel like in your area. And it's super cool. Even the pressure, you can see here how it's going to change throughout the day quite a while in front of where you are right now. Like if you have not tried the new weather app, give it a chance because there's even radar and other things in here that we just, we haven't had before. It's amazing. I can't say enough good things about the new weather app. Following that in the email app in iOS 16, you can now schedule a reply. So if you're on vacation or something and you don't want it to go out until a certain time, just tap and hold on the send arrow and you'll see these new options right here. You've got send now, of course, send at nine tonight, send at 8 a.m. on a Monday, you know, when you'll obviously be back in the office or you can even send it later. You can schedule this out for a, a really long time in advance right here. You can even go to other months, like you could send this in December if you want that to go. Oh, I didn't mean, oh man, he's gonna think I'm not showing up to my appointment. Uh, can I Can I unsend? Okay, cool, I was able to swipe over and actually delete my auto reply. Apple Music in iOS 16 has gotten some really nice updates specifically for playlists. So my big playlist right here, dude posting his W's, I can now sort. If I go up here in the top right, I can tap on these three dots and sort by either the title, the artist, the album, or the release date. So if I wanna go to the newest stuff at the top, I can do that, of course. Tapping it again, it will reverse that order. If I do this and then release date, it goes to the oldest to the newest. A few years ago, Apple added the ability to remove default apps that come pre-installed on your iPhone. And in iOS 16, they have expanded this now to the Clock app, as well as two other Apple apps, the Health app, as well as Find My. So if you don't want these cluttering up your home screen, you can now get rid of them, which brings the list pretty close to nearly every app on your iPhone and can now be removed if you don't want it. And finally, wrapping up this hidden features video, in Safari, you can now pin tabs, which is cool. So if there are places that you frequently visit, like, I don't know, for me, it's been the iPhone 14 Pro page, you can tap here and then tap and hold on the tab. See this new option right here that says, Pin. And if you pin it, you can see it goes all the way to the top right there in a special new area that you haven't seen before. So guys, these are all of my tips and tricks for iOS 16. Some crazy powerful features have been added. Comment down below what hidden feature was your favorite. And of course, thank you so much for watching. I've been Sam. Enjoy iOS 16 on your iPhone. It is by far the biggest update in years. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.